Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can run a Mongo database inside of a Docker container. I'm a big fan of running databases inside of a Docker container, mostly because if you work on a team, you can make sure that any of your database changes don't break the app before you push it to dev and test, which will then affect other team members. And it's even better if you're a solo developer because there's no cost associated with running it on your local computer. First, I'll show you how to run it using Docker Run, and then I'll show you a cool way of using VS Code to interact with your database. And then finally, I'll show you how to use Docker Compose to start your database. So let's jump in and get started. First, I'll show you how to run this using Docker Run. Go ahead and open up a terminal, and you can be in any folder that you want. And the command for this is a little bit long, but I'll break it down into pieces. First, we'll say Docker and then run, and then dash D means detached mode. And then I'll give it a name. I'll just call this Mongo Demo. And then we're going to pass in a couple different environment variables. And these environment variables are for the root username and the root password. And because this is going to get kind of long, I'm going to break this into different lines. And the trick to do that is if you hit the backslash. And then to move your cursor to the next line without actually executing the command is Shift Enter or Alt Enter. And then dash E in a space. And I'm going to just copy this in because it is a pretty long name. I don't want to mess it up. So this is the environment variable for the root username. And it's all caps. And it's mongo underscore init db underscore root underscore username. And then you say equals, and you can give it whatever name you want. I'm going to call it Mongo Admin. And then again, I'm going to do a new line just because this is going to get long. And then another dash E for another environment variable. And this one is for the password. And it's the same as before, Mongo init DB root and then password. And then equal sign, you can give it whatever password you want. Mine will be like and subscribe. Next, I'll define the port mappings. So dash P. And I'm just going to use the default ports for Mongo, which is 27017. And then lastly, I'll give it the image name, which is Mongo. And you can leave it as Mongo if you want. That will pull down the latest image. Or you can define a version here if you want. So if you say version 7.0, that will always use the version 7.0. Now you can go ahead and run this. And when you run that, it will go ahead and print out this long identifier. This is the identifier for your container. And mine did start right away because I already have the image on my computer. If you run a Docker run and you don't have the image, for example, if you don't already have this Mongo 7.0 image, it will pull that down first and then it will run it for you. So you don't have to always pull the image first. If you don't want to, you can just say Docker run and it'll pull it down. And now if I say Docker PS, that will print out my running containers and you can see the Mongo demo is now running. Now that that container is up and running, you can connect to it and you can use that database. However, there's one little thing I want to add and that's a volume. If I were to delete this container that's running right now, any data that's inside of it would just be deleted. And that's because the files that Mongo is using to store that data is in the container. And if you delete the container, all the files inside of it get deleted as well. And that's not ideal if you want to make sure that your data is there every time you delete and restart your container. I do want to specify though that the data will stay there if you stop the container and restart it. It only goes away if you delete the container. And in order for that data to persist, it's actually not that hard. We just need to add a volume. And a volume is just a way of saying, put the data on our local computer, but let Docker have access to it. This is the command that we just ran. And in order to add a volume, there's only one thing we have to add. And right after we define the ports, I'm going to define the volume. So if you go up, say dash V, there's a couple different ways you can do volumes. I like to use named volumes, mostly just because it's the easiest way. And to do that, you just give it a name. I'm going to call mine Mongo Demo, and then a colon. And then you give it the path to where Mongo stores its database information. And that is data slash DB. This data slash DB folder is in the Docker documentation for Mongo. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And I'll also put a link down below to how uh, volumes work in Docker. And that's all we have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to go into Docker Desktop and show you what this actually did. This is Docker Desktop, and I'm in the container section. And you can see that the Mongo dash demo container is up and running. And if I go over here to volumes, there's a new one called Mongo Demo that was just created. And adding volumes isn't a requirement. It's just something I like to do because if I do delete the container and I recreate it, as long as you use that same volume name, the data that you have in your database will still be there. And I want to point out why I always map these ports. I had somebody ask me this question in a previous video where I showed how to run SQL Server on a Mac. If you run this command like it is here, you're going to run version 7.0 on this port 27.0.1.7. And let's say, for example, that I want to test running something in version 6 of Mongo, but I want to make sure that I don't lose all the stuff I had in version 7 of Mongo. Well, you can do that. So if you change the version to 6 and you change your host port to something else, you can now run both of those images at the same time, and you can connect to them at the same time from different applications, of course, without them messing with each other. So if you connect on port 27.0.1.8, that will give you the version 6 of Mongo. And if you run the command we ran before, which was on port 27.0.1.7, that will give you version 7 of Mongo. 
So there's a little bonus tip for you. Let's move on now to how you would connect to this database in VS Code. Like I mentioned before, if you're in an API, you can connect to this database just like you would, but sometimes you just need to get in there and add test data or just query what's in there and see what it looks like. I really like using VS Code for that. There's an extension in VS Code that lets you do this. Once you're in VS Code, if you open up extensions and you search for MongoDB, it's called MongoDB for VS Code and it's from the MongoDB team. And I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, you'll just click the install button right here. And that will add a new icon for you, this little leaf. If you click that MongoDB leaf, it will allow you to connect to your database. Go ahead and click add connection and you can connect with the connection string or you can use a little form that they have. I'm gonna do open with form and the connection type is standalone. The host name is localhost. When you run your database in Docker, it's going to always be localhost as the host name. Since we mapped our ports to ports 27017, that's gonna be the same here. And then authentication, username and password. Go ahead and enter the username and password that you used. And that should be all you have to do. So go ahead and click connect. And you can see it says successfully connected to localhost on port 27017. And up here in connections, you can see it's connected. So if you expand it, you can see the different databases that are inside of it. And what I really like about this is it actually gives you a way to basically run JavaScript code against that database. To do that, if you right click and say add database, it'll open up this JavaScript file for you. And from this file, you can interact with your database in the same way that you would if you were running this inside of a normal JavaScript application. And they give you a nice little template. Go ahead and replace the values in here with what you want to use. I'll just name the database demo. Collection name, I'll just call it users. And really quick, I'm going to change collection to be collection name. And then down here, I'm going to say const collection equals db.getCollection with collection name. I have an array of test data. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in here. It's just creating an array of users that each have a name and an email, and I'm calling that constant users. And then since db.getCollection gives me a reference to that collection, now I can just use that collection to add those users. So I can say collection.insert many of users. And then lastly, just to make sure that they're all in there, I'll just do a find and get all of them back. Okay, now if I come up here and I run this with this little play button right here, I'm gonna go ahead and close this first, but I'll go ahead and say yes. And this little playground result tab opens up and this will show you the last command that was in your JavaScript file. Since my last command was find, which will return all of the users, it returns an array with all the users inside of it. And this is just a really cool way to interact with your Mongo database on your local computer. And so hopefully some people find that helpful. Now that you're able to run your database and interact with it, I wanna show you how to use Docker Compose to run your database instead of using the Docker run command. And if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, it's a way of running one or more containers at the same time. And the reason I really like it is because you put all of your configuration into a YAML file, and that configuration includes all the stuff that we put in our Docker run command, which was the image name, the environment variables, the volumes, all of that into one file. And then instead of running Docker run with all that stuff in it, your command is just docker compose up. So let me jump in and I'll show you how that works. And all you need in order for this to work is a docker compose file. And normally you'd wanna put this docker compose file in a project next to where you might be running an API, for example. For this demo, I just created a folder and I only have this docker compose file in here, but the name is docker-compose.yaml. And inside of here, we're gonna define all the stuff we need for our database. The first thing you wanna do is define the version. And this is the version for docker compose. I'm gonna go ahead and use version 3.8. The next thing we declare is services. Anything inside this services section will be run as a container when you run Docker Compose up. So I'm gonna to go to the next line and I will declare Mongo as my next service. And this name can be whatever you want and this will make up part of the name of the container when it's running. And I'll show you what that looks like when we run this. In this section for Mongo, we're going to define all of the properties for our Mongo container. These don't have to be in any particular order. So the first thing I'm gonna define is the image and we used Mongo and that was version seven and that was version 7.0. And next we'll define the environment variables. The environment variables that we use here are the same two environment variables we used when we ran Docker run. And I'm gonna paste these in so I don't screw them up. So the, the first one will be the username and we used Mongo admin. And the second one will be the password and I used like and subscribe. And next we'll define the ports. And this will be the same as before as well. So 27017 map to 27017. Lastly, we need to define the volumes. And lastly, we need to define the volume that we want to use so we don't lose our data. And volumes have to be set up in Docker Compose in a very special way. So I'm going to actually set the volume up first and then I'm gonna tell this image how to use it. So I'm gonna go back to the top level and I'll say volumes. And then this, you give your volume a name. So I'm gonna call it Mongo Data. 
and then you go to a new line and I'm just gonna say driver is local. And that's all we have to do to declare that volume. And so lastly, we need to tell our image to use it. So if you go back up after ports and you say volumes and then a dash and then you give it the name that you used. So this name has to match this name right here. And then you give it the path that it's supposed to map to inside your container, which was data slash DB. And that's it. That's our Docker Compose file. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. In order to run that Docker Compose file, we need to be in the exact same folder of where that file is. So I'm gonna CD into my code samples folder. And if I do an LS here, you can see there's my Docker Compose file. And now all you have to do is say Docker Compose up, and that's it. This will run that Mongo database the exact same way that we did before using Docker Run. I am gonna add dash D just for detached mode so it doesn't lock up my terminal. So I'll run that, and you can see now that it's created that database. I switched over to Docker Desktop. I wanna show you just a couple small things that are different in how it runs these containers when you use Docker Compose. This container here is the container that we ran earlier when we ran Docker Run. But you can see now that there's a green one down here called Code Samples. And the reason it has a different name is because Code Samples is the name of the folder and where I ran that Docker Docker compose up command from. And because Docker compose can run multiple images, for example, if I had an API that was connecting to this Mongo database, I could run my MongoDB container and the API container from the same Docker compose file. If I expand code samples, you'll see inside of it is our Mongo database that's running and it's been up for two minutes. It also does a similar thing for volumes. If I go over to volumes, you'll see here, instead of the name being Mongo demo, which we used in our Docker run command, this one here is code samples underscore Mongo data. So it's going to prepend the folder name to your volume name. I think those are the main things you need to know in order to run a Mongo database on your computer using Docker. Now you know how to run that Mongo database using Docker Run, how to connect to it and interact with it using VS Code, and how to use Docker Compose to start it up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.